Yeah. Uh, where do we put this in your head? Because she wants yeah, us behind the piano. Because yeah. 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 there's only four. four. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm afraid of tripping on it and having that. Yeah.
Good morning, church. Uh, welcome to our Sunday worship service. We are celebrating a special Sunday, and all the signs in the sanctuary show what Sunday it is. We are celebrating the Pentecost Sunday worship service today. Uh, do you know the meaning of Pentecost? So today, this morning, a couple of people came to me and asking, you know, what's the meaning of Pentecost? Why we are, you know, wearing red? Um, I also had time to ask the meaning of Pentecost as I was working on this service. And I realized something. I learned something. Uh, before the Holy Spirit came to us, right, uh, there was a significant event. Jesus took the cross, right? And Jesus died on the cross. The Son of God, God's Son, died in the world. And God lost His Son in the world. Afterward, Jesus was resurrected and He was ascended into heaven. And then after all that happened, God sent the Holy Spirit to the same world after all that happened. After God lost his son in the world, God sent the Holy Spirit to the world again. Would you do that? And I realized this. It means God reaffirms the world again. 
after all that happened, after all that happened with God's son, God reaffirmed the world. God reaffirmed life. God reaffirmed that life can be still good. I think this, this is the meaning that I found from the Pentecost this year. And God reaffirmed God's hope for the world in a specific way. God sent the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the new creation. The disciples saw Jesus was resurrected, but the disciples saw Jesus was ascended into heaven. Now they became alone again. For those who were not able to carry on by themselves, for those who did not know where to go without Jesus, God sent the Holy Spirit. Those who have received the Holy Spirit live with a brand new power. Those who receive the Holy Spirit live with a brand new hope. Those who receive the Holy Spirit live with a brand new source of courage. And we call that people the church. So my siblings in Christ, how is your soul today? And we see what's happening in the world. And people call it gun epidemic, gun violence epidemic. And what are you driven by today? God does not want us to shy away what is happening in the world. And God does not want us to be drawn in sadness. Rather, God wants us to walk in the middle of them with the power of the Holy Spirit. So receive the Holy Spirit, the spirit of reaffirmation. Let us receive the Holy Spirit, the spirit of new creation. And after this service, I hope and pray that all of us may be able to say that God still loves you, the world. The you, world, God still loves you. Amen. All right. Let us begin our worship service as we sing together. There is a song, Face We Sing 2141. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from Jesus. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from God. Alleluia. Love in my heart is singing, praises, alleluia. Love is a gift from God. There is a song of peace. There's a song of peace in my heart. Peace is a gift from Jesus. There's a song of peace in my heart. Peace is a gift from God. Alleluia. Peace in my heart is singing praises. Alleluia. Peace is a gift from God. There is a song of hope. There is a song of hope in my heart. Hope is a gift from Jesus. There is a song of hope in my heart. Hope is a gift from God. Alleluia, hope is in the heart, is singing praises, Alleluia, hope 
peace a gift from God. One more time, there is a song of joy. There's a song of joy in my heart. Joy is a gift from Jesus. There's a song of joy in my heart. Joy is a gift from God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joy in my heart is singing praises. Alleluia. Joy is a gift from God. Amen. Good morning. Our announcements are on the back page of your bulletin. We are still, those of us who are continuing on, reading three pages a day from the Bible, and did you know you can read it cover to cover in a year with three pages a day? It's pretty incredible. Take the reading planner on the table by the sanctuary door. The scripture reading for this week is Luke 20 to John 13. We've jumped to the New Testament. Wednesday Bible study, we meet at 10.30 in the morning for those early birds, and many of us come at 6.30 at night because our days are full. We welcome you to either session. Roger Marum shares his recently published book, Faith, Doubt, and Listening, with our church members. This book can be a good friend if you're following Jesus, wrestling with questions that faith brings. The books are placed on the table in the church lobby by the office. Roger, are those for loan or for sale? On the house, it's even better. Okay, support Ukraine through gifts to UMCOR. Support UMCOR's international disaster response by making a gift um, through the advance code in your bulletin. And then we have continuing prayers for the victims and their families in the mass shooting. Belinda Forbes, who's our UM missionary. Ukraine and all those suffering in the war. My son, Richard DeWitt, goes back under chemo, and we're crossing our fingers this time. Son-in-law, Justin Bora, who suffered injuries in a motorcycle accident. He's one of our neighbors. Patty Forbes, dear friend. Patty Wheeler, who is recovering from colon cancer surgery. Fast recovery for Jeff Seward from a persistent cough. Jeff's mother, Thelma, who has kidney failure. And Jay Clark, who has cancer and is now in hospice. And happy birthday to all the June babies in this room. All right. For those of you who are able, will you please stand for our call to worship? When the world divides us, come Holy Spirit, make us one. When the world calls us orphaned, come Holy Spirit, make us family. When the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. And, um, the next hymn, you may be seated, is from Faith We Sing, 2120. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restfulness, stir me from pleasantness, wind. Wind on the sea, you moved on the waters, you called to the deep. 
Then you cast stop the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the eons you call to each thing. Then you wake from your slumbers. And rise on your wings, spirit, spirit of gentleness, spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free, spirit, spirit of Stir me from pleasantness, wind, wind on the sea. Verse three, we sang in a stable. We sang in a stable. You cry from a hill. Then you whispered in silence. When the whole world was still, and down in the city you called once again. When you blew through your people on, on the rush of the wind, spirit, spirit of gentleness. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and freeing. Spirit, spirit of restfulness, stir me from pleasantness, wind. Wind on the sea, you call from tomorrow. You call from tomorrow. You break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow. The gifts, dream dreams. Are we mean civilians? Are men clear their eyes with all new decisions? Your people arise one more time, spirit, spirit of gentleness. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling from free. Spirit, spirit of restfulness, stir me from pleasantness, wind. Wind on the sea. Now I invite you to look back on the time that God gave us during the last week. So in silence, let us have a moment to tune the relationships in our life. How is your, uh, your relationship with your God? How is your relationship with yourself? How is your relationship with others and materials? And how much energy did you use during the last week? So now let us be in a moment of silence, asking for God's illuminating grace.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Send us your spirit, O Lord. Evening and fall just and hold just to near. Wake the morning light, make a living bright. Shine on our darkness, O Lord. Hold us with mercy, O Lord. Sorrow has spoken, has broken our hearts. Close us in your care, be the life we bear. Feed us and fill us, O Lord. Teach us your spirit, O Lord. Shadows have clouded, have crowded our sight. Give us hearts that see, set our loving free. Hear us and help us, O Lord. Send us good summer, O Lord. Winters have chilled us and stilled us too long. Give us love's on fire, be our true desire. Send us your spirit, O Lord. Now this is time to share our joys and prayers. If you have any joy or prayers to share with your church family, then please stand up and uh, share your uh, joys and prayers. Cheek. Uh, Mary Jane Jenkins is really suffering from a illness of two kinds, and we need to keep our in our prayers. Thank you, thank you. And Joanne was admitted to the hospital again, and she was in the ICU, and now uh, she uh, came back from the ICU. And Ken said uh, he is getting some good news and uh, medical doctors have figured out what the problem was, and it was not with her lung, it was with her heart, right? So that's the information that I got from him, so please continue to uh, pray for Joanne and Ken. Karen. First for our friend George, who lost his leg um, due to some illness, mm. so part of his leg, I guess, the lower part, but as he you know, goes through strength training and getting back to realizing what he can do with his existing body. His name one more time, Karen. George. George. Forty-six years ago today, Ed and I had a beautiful wedding on a day is (laughs) (laughs) 
Anyone else? Any joys or prayers? Suyong? Um, I have two prayers. First is for um, a mom of two of my students who are twins. Um, she has recently diagnosed with stomach cancer, mm. and yeah, the the girls are ten years old, and she's sixty. So it's a it's a challenge, and she's going through a second round of chemo, and she um, she actually had her second round of chemo on Friday, and she have the um, care team to give her a lot of steroids just because she wants to come see them play the. My studio recital yesterday. Mm. Yeah, and so she, her name is Linda Greenbat. Um, and then another prayer that I would like to ask for is, um, as we navigate our first flight with my my folks back there, all the two little ones and Jason, to, on Tuesday we're flying out to Austin to see some friends. Mm. And so I'll miss next week, I'll miss all of you, but we'll be back the week after. Um, I asked for uh, prayers. Hmm? Oh. I asked for prayers for um, Zoila, who has worked for us for 25, 30 years. Uh, she has lymphoma. Uh, she just learned that. And then uh, a joy. Uh, we've been married for 46 years as of um, last week. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Any joys or prayers? And let us be in a moment of silence. Um, and Ken Weber and Joanne Weber uh, were going to prepare the prayer for today, and they said they wouldn't be available to do so. So we have a prayer from the uh, Reconciling Ministry Network, and let us pray uh, as it is written on the screen. Creator of all queer and wonderful things, you have made and you make and remake us. Gather us in harmony, not a false unity, but a selfless and brave coexistence. Give us hungry spirits to hear the diverse melodies of our kin, to recognize the infinite shade of our existence in and because of you. We are proud of who we are because of who you are, because who you are is reflected through us because who we are is a part of our body. Pride, not the sin, but the reclamation, the reconciliation, the redemption. Let that be our clock and our love, our greatest treasure. Amen.
We have a little bit of a change today in the scripture reading. And in your bulletin, you can see that it's from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. But we will have multiple actors today in the scripture reading. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Who's reading number two? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Now we need to finish watching the video. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Now a video. Number four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And now a video. Number five. Literal, utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Eomites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Porches, and Asia, Phyria, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? 13. Seventeen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Eighteen. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Nineteen. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. We cannot, see, uh, we cannot see the wind with our eyes, 
but the wind has very strong power. Uh, it can do many, many, many things. Um, this is a pinwheel that I made two days ago. And once the wind blows, it moves. Likewise, the wind can do many things. It can move the giant power plant. This is so huge. And can you see the people at the top? And you can navigate the sea using the wind. Some boats are small, but some are very huge. But you know what? Other than natural wind, there are different kinds of wind. You cannot see them with your eyes, but they have such power to move a lot of things. In the country where I grew up, there is a national exam like SAT. You can take SAT a couple of times in a year, and I heard there was SAT just yesterday, right? But the exam that I'm talking about takes place just, uh, just once in a year. And I think almost all children begin the race for this test, which takes place at their age of 18 as soon as they are born. And they think this test could determine the rest of their life. One day, I was in a classroom. I was senior at high school. Other than, uh, yeah, other than that national exam, there were a couple of different ways that I can get the admission from colleges. So I was waiting for the result after I applied uh, my application. I submitted my application. I remember at the time the national exam was just a month ahead. So my friends and I were very anxious. One day in the middle of a class, a teacher came in and she called my name and she asked me to leave. Everybody in the classroom knew what that meant. Since I got the admission from the college, I didn't have to be in the classroom anymore. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, right? <laughs> so she said that I could distract other people, so I have to leave. So I left. On my way home, I asked myself why I am not happy. My mind was full of thoughts, and it took some time to figure out why my mind is so complicated now. And the reason that I found was this. Going to college was such a big thing in my life. I was anxious about it, and I prayed about it, and I had some sort of sense of responsibility for my family, and I wanted to meet all the expectations from my family and my, from my church, too. And I found myself driven by them, the anxiety. I was driven by anxiety, and I was driven by my desire to meet all the expectations. And now, I finally got the, um, the result of it, the admission. Rather than being happy, I felt I had lost the power that used to move me. So that's why I, my mind was so complicated. I don't think it was just a teenager's concern. Sometimes we need to come back to this question. What drives me? What do, you want to, what do I want to want? And what do I want to desire? If I am a pinwheel, if you are a pinwheel, if you are a sailing boat, uh, what's the wind for you? As we keep these questions uh, thin, there is something that I promised to you. We are going to make the pinwheel, right? Chris, would you please do it? Give the materials to Finn right now that she can work on it during the sermon. Um, I don't know what the power is for you, but for me, sometimes I am driven by love for someone. I am driven by affection for someone. I am driven by uh, sometimes anxiety, sometimes desire and pride. This is the pinwheel that I made. So 
you can keep this and you are going to make uh, a tinder with the materials that Chris will give you. Okay? And you can go back to your seat. <laughs> and there is a person that we know. Uh, he had done amazing things in his life. He served those who had contagious disease. He had fellowship with the untouchables. He visited the unforgivable people to forgive them. He fed many people. He quenched many people's thirst. The people were tired in the evil and sinful reality. Violence was just everywhere at the time. The people were scared and the people were discouraged. But they were able to find comfort from Jesus. The people found God, found God from him. By what he was driven, by what he was moved, he did have a wind that moved his whole life. I would like to show you something. Uh, two years ago, 18, uh, eight teenagers gathered to make some improvement for the pavilion. A couple of weeks ago, a family called church if they could use this place for their family gathering. And she said her son is coming back from the military service, so I'm glad that the family could take advantage of the work that our teenagers had done. One more, yes. And there are pictures that people can see as soon as they get inside our church. This is one of the many pictures from the UM Army. They show what we have done as a church. And this hat is created by the craft group. And our church members made these, hoping that winter may be warmer for our neighbors. When we do these works, we need a brand new wind. When the wind blows, when we are moved by the wind, we become the body of Christ. We become literally the body of Christ. Um, I want to close this sermon with a story that all of you know well. You heard this story many, many times. So I went to the prayer house when I was young, right? And the only prayer request that I had was to, was that God may heal my right hand. So I stayed at the uh, prayer house throughout the summer vacation, and I prayed really hard. And yeah, for about a month, I prayed, God, please heal my right hand. And, you know, uh, yeah, and that didn't happen. And I was attending in the last prayer meeting, and something happened, something mysterious thing happened to me. It was not to my body, but it was in my prayer. And that changed my prayer. So I used to say, God, please heal my right hand. Where are you, God? Where are you, Jesus? I used to pray like that. But my prayer changed. It was such a transformation in my prayer. Rather than asking, I answered. I answered to God. And I said, Lord, please use me. Please use me. And that's what the Spirit of God does to us. When we receive the Spirit of God, we no longer say, where are you, God? When we receive the Holy Spirit, we say, God, please use us. That's why I am here, and that's why we are here today. My siblings in Christ, I pray that the wind of God may blow to you and blow to us. I pray that the wind of God may blow to us. 
I pray you may experience this mysterious union with God so that God may shine through you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of compassion, wants to move you today. The Holy Spirit wants us to be the body of Jesus. So let us close this sermon with the prayer of Mother Teresa, one of the prayers that I really love. Let us pray. Flood my soul with thy spirit and love. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that all my life may only be a radiance of thine. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel thy presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Amen. Now let us sing together in the singing phase we sing 2255. In the singing, in the silence, in the handshakes, back turn open. In the blessing, in the breaking, in the presence at this table. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the wine of praise. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the bread of peace. In the question, in the answer, in the moment of acceptance, in the heart's cry, in the healing, in the circle of your people. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the wine of praise. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the bread of peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We join with every creature in heaven and on earth, every creature under the earth and in the sea, to sing your praises. You create all that is bringing forth goodness and new life, 
You are at work in our world, still transforming lives, healing brokenness, comforting those who mourn. You send prophets to call them back to your path, reminding them of your love and telling them to care for one another. You were always faithful for you loved your people. And so we join all creation as we sing praises to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You gave Jesus to walk with us and to show us your love. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and taught us your ways. He showed us the abundance of your love and reminded us to share it with others. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we offer our very selves with glad and grateful hearts as we proclaim this mystery. Christ was with us from the beginning. Christ is with us today. Christ will be with us until the end of time. Send your spirit of abundant love upon these gifts of the earth, bread and wine. Transform them by the power of your grace into food for our bodies and nourishment for our souls. Send your spirit upon us and transform us by the power of your wisdom that we may become the body of Christ. Feeding his lambs and tending to his sheep, all praise is yours, God of power and might, wisdom and honor, glory and blessing. All praise is yours now and forever. Amen. We have uh, three options for this Holy Communion today. We are coming back to our normal way of um, Holy Communion. But if you don't feel that you are, you are ready for this normal way of communion, then we have capsules that we have used for the last uh, for a few months. So please, as you come to the table, please let me know which way you prefer. And for the normal way of communion, we do the intention. You dip the bread in the cup, and if you prefer the other way, then please take the capsule. And we also have uh, the gluten-free bread, so let us know.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, come afresh on me. Melt me, holy, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Our worship service is about to end. In this service, what heart have you created? And what would you offer up to God? And what, uh, and what blessing would you be for your neighbors after this service is over? The world is waiting for your new presence. And your working place is, and your family are waiting for your new presence. So now let us be in a moment of silence, asking for God's grace to create us anew. Now, please join me in offering prayer. God of wind and fire, breathe your Holy Spirit over us again this day. Help us to better hear one another and entangle the differences we have allowed to divide us. May your Spirit give us the power to be the church you have hoped we would be, one body, one people, seeking to build your beloved community of justice, mercy, and hope. As we bring our tithe and offering to you this day, set us on fire once again. Fill us with your power. In Christ we pray. Amen. If you are able, please rise and let us sing together as a fire is meant for burning. We are singing verse 1 and 3. As a fire is meant for burning With a bright and warming flame So the church is meant for mission Giving glory to God's name Not to preach our creed or customs but to be the bridge of care. We join hands across the nations, finding neighbors everywhere. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed. So may we be signs of oneness, neither's people's many hued. As a rainbow lights the heavens, when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's new and Glorious down. Now our worship service is ending, but our discipleship is beginning. So go in peace and be a blessing for the world. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let the bitch.